question about compressing the reverbs, and this is this is one of these things that I think a lot of people overlook. I'm not saying that any of you do. You might have great um, reverb techniques or ambient techniques, but for those of you who are just getting started or are curious, let's have a laustra, as the Dutch would say, and check out what these things sound like. If we're listening to this right now with the compression off, okay, this is just it being fed into the into the reverb, and you can hear the there are accents that are being fed into the send boom, 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 that are way louder than the other elements. It's a it's a it's a it's not the same type of balance because we're sending potentially from, for instance, right. In this situation, we're sending from individual channels sometimes, and we're sending from groups. And depending on what's happening in the mix, the individual channel might be being compressed in a group. Dynamics changes might be being happening later on in the chain, and they're not necessarily happening in the sense. So you're getting dynamic differences that you might not want within the send architecture. That's where you're like, so... What's coming through the reverb is those dynamic differences. You're getting certain accents, certain notes, certain elements louder than others. And so what this reverb does, what the compression does on the reverb, separate from making it louder, is sort of tie all of that together. It just sort of smushes it into this like ambient texture that we're adding to things. And you can hear that in the AB. This is off. Those big moments, like... You hear the little bitty toms and then you hear the big accents. Huge differences. That's only gonna add to dynamic problems later on. We're gonna get these big bursts of those toms. And those toms are those taiko drums are already up front. So if I have them in a send and that send is going to a reverb and that reverb doesn't have some compression on them, I'm just going to keep adding to the upfrontness of those elements. And I'm not going to be adding more to the ambience of the whole track. By adding the compression, it's like making that performance feel much more uniform in the reverb. And the other thing that's happening is the room tone comes up from the compression. And we know that with how we've been in the compression episodes, right? We're limiting dynamic range. So the quiet sounds get louder and the loud sounds get quieter and everything kind of squishes together. And so when you have this beautiful room tone that you've created in your reverb, and now you have these big transients and stuff like that that are coming through it and really smacking that reverb, you throw a compressor on afterwards and that takes that beautiful room tone and texture, brings it up and also minimizes the performance variance that are coming through that send. And so it just becomes more reverby and at an easier tool to use within the mixing chain. It's no longer like you're gonna be fighting yourself, you're gonna be fighting yourself, or you have to get every single thing perfect, and then you get all that into your groups, and then you only send from your groups. You only send from like the last, or you're putting reverb on the master channel, excuse me. You're only, you're, you're only sending from like the very, very last stage where everything is perfectly polished. By having the compression, you can send multiple stages. You can be like, well, I'm gonna send the snare from the snare individually, but I'm also gonna send the snare and the whole clap group, because maybe I want a little bit more of that one snare in the, in the thing. And then you don't need to necessarily be dealing with all these perfect dynamics. Like you've been building your dynamics as you go, you get your nugget, and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna send stuff to my reverbs. And then you don't need to worry so much about the different performance variants that are within those groups because you're just listening to the output. You can send from anywhere now and that's how you maintain those dynamics and also get the room tone up. It doesn't just make it louder, it ties everything together and you can really hear that in the AB. So it's again, listen for the room tone. It's not just the production, it's not just the performance. It's that actual reverb sound comes up and everything just glues. clean and i've got a pretty fast attack on this because i know i'm using transients this is for drums i want that those transients you can hear them. i don't want them coming through that reverb as more transients we already have those i just need the tone and then that gets us to the next bit also i need the volume increase i want this reverb more present so i like what this compressor is doing especially if i turn off the uh the the utility now from here the next bit is, and actually I will, I'll leave this on since we've been A-Bing at this level. This is probably a good level to be at. 
Ah, it's a little quiet. Let's turn this back up again. There we go. There's also some frequency response issues in the reverb that I can only address with like a, 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 a paragraphic or a parametric EQ. Uh, and that's these. So you can hear there's a little bit of shrillness in the plate. It's a little bit like there's something in the like, and I'll pull another one in here so I can like dig around. Um, you can hear this like this presence issue, especially with like plates. It's a metallic surface. I mean, obviously this is a digital plugin. It's not a metallic surface, but for most plates or reverbs or whatever, they're metal, and metal is going to have a specific frequency response to it. It's got a great resonance. It goes. Zzz, it's got this really fuzzy fun texture to it but that can also create these sort of resonances that might need to be mitigated a little bit so i can show you here it's just a little nasally and you can really hear those transients again like this is where all the drum transients are like especially for kicks it's all right and about and around and like between like maybe 900 hertz and 2k so it's just and that chur, 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 it's just really aggressive in that range. So I wanted to limit that a little bit, or not limit it, but just like pull it back out of focus using a natural phase EQ, just push it back in the mix a little bit. And so you can hear this for the before and the after. Chur, 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 chur. Smooth. That was that's that first that's that first bell curve here. It's just to smooth out that top end because it was a little bit aggressive. The next one is it's a little boomy, and you can hear that down in here. <laughs> like a bunch of weight in reverbs in that range is going to mess with the phase response. That's low mids, yo. That's that's low mids, and low mids are gonna mess with the phase response and the intensity of other low mids we already have present. So I want the warmth, but I've got to pull them back out of focus a bit to allow for the other low mids to cut through. And some people use ducking for this, and that's an absolutely fine way of making space for your reverbs and for your transient response. It totally is. But you don't have to necessarily go that route. The other option is being able to carve them up a little bit. So for me, down and around 100, you can see all this energy. You can see all that. I mean, it's basically where most of the energy in the reverb is still is. So I need to pull this out a little bit. And this is like, you can hear this kind of exact range. It's just like, it's just mush. And that's all that's gonna do is, is mess with the other transient response that we have and the weight that we've been defining in the nugget already. So I wanna pull that out a bit. I'm not gonna go with really sharp cues. I just want to pull it back out of focus a bit. So I have the warmth of it, but I don't have the shrillness of the attack and the top, which is kind of present from the metal, from the, well, the metal, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, simulation within the actual plate reverb. And I need to get some of those low mids out just because they're going to totally mess with the low mids we've already worked with. So before... And remember, we've been doing, this is, all, we're still expanding on frequency response, right? So I implore you, listen to the, the depth. You'll hear the weight of those drums. Those da -jum -jum. They're real forward in the mix. And as soon as you stick this natural EQ on them, everything pulls back. And that's what I'm going for with this level of reverb. I want this reverb to act like a sheen in the mix. I want it to create a space in the background. This isn't meant to be focal. So if there's anything focal happening in the reverb, I need to mitigate that. And so the first step for mitigating the focalness of the of the like the transients coming through is using the dynamics. That's compressing it, that's limiting the, the dynamic range, and that's making it so it's a lot more flat. But that doesn't change the fact that the frequency response is still having certain elements in certain frequency ranges more focal than others. And that's where the serial processing of the compressor and the EQ come into play. And so you can really hear that when we AB with everything now. And this time I'm gonna turn the utility back on again because you're gonna need to hear it without level changes just to really understand the actual AB. So here it is, just the reverb with the sends, no EQ, no compression. You can hear the elements more than you hear the reverb, right? And then, 
real flat, real consistent, and especially with this part here, I'm gonna turn this one off again now, especially with this EQ here, listen to the frequency change, listen to the depth adjust and everything get flat with the EQ off and on. Right, those low toms don't pull forward in the mix anymore. Wong, gong, gong, it's moving left and right and stuff. Shoop, as soon as this comes back on, flat. That's why I'm making those changes.